and uh, good evening. All over the world, there are fisher folk who say they might get out of fishing if they can't afford to take their boats out to sea. In Barbados, six years ago, fishing contributed $29 million to the Barbadian economy. That was six years ago. Last year, it was estimated to have contributed $10 million less. A four-year global study by two prominent universities suggests that in the next 40 years, the world seas will be empty of enough fish stock to support commercial fishing unless biodiversity is maintained and ecosystems are protected. In Suriname, raising fuel prices have grounded 70%. Seven out of 10 fishing boats don't leave port from Suriname because of the raising cost of oil. And the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, well, they estimate that the world loses a staggering $50 billion a year from poor management, from inefficiency, from overfishing. Are Caribbean fisheries sinking or swimming in a sea of uncertainty? Should we bank on fishing in the Caribbean? If you pardon the pun. Is Caribbean fishing in need of its own bailout? What form of bailout should that take? Well, we hope to haul in, if not some answers, then many more but important and right questions on the future of Caribbean fishing with a panel of experts drawn from Caribbean government, academia, and the fishing industry itself. Dennis Kalman, MP, is Barbados' ambassador to CARICOM and chief negotiator. He's been given the task by the David Thompson administration to finally sort out a long-standing dispute with a CARICOM neighbor, Trinidad and Tobago, over fishing. He says the current state of the region's fisheries sector is not as positive as it could be, but in light of measures being put in place to enhance security, he and his government believe that the fishing sector can benefit. Dr. Patrick McConney is a senior lecturer at the Center for Resource Management and Environmental Studies, it's called CIRMES, at the University of the West Indies Cayfield campus. He's a principal researcher in the CIRMES four-year project on marine governance in the Eastern Caribbean. It's called the Margov Project, organizers of this panel discussion. Studies on fisheries governance in the CARICOM region highlight several challenges. All that's needed, Patrick McConney says, is a little CARICOM creativity to overcome them, networking people at all levels of governance to work across national boundaries. Milton Houghton is the Deputy Executive Director of the Caribbean Regional Fisheries Mechanism, the CRFM, initials you'll hear a lot of this evening. He's been working in fisheries for 27 years, first as a fisheries officer and then as acting directory, a director of fisheries in Jamaica, and then in the private sector, and then at the regional level at CARICOM in Guyana. He's trained in fisheries, management, and the law. Milton Horton says fisheries is a strategic but long neglected and underperforming industry. He feels that fishing can reach its full economic potential if the countries of the region work together in concert to protect, manage, and use its abundant natural resources. And what would any debate on Caribbean fishing be without a fisherman's perspective? Mitchell Lay is an Antiguan fisherman who has his own boat, and he's the head of the coordinating unit of the regional Fisher Folk Network. That's a CRFM project that's out to network all the national Fisher Folk organizations in the Caribbean. So Mitchell Lay brings the Fisher Folk's perspectives, but the big picture of regional fishing, because he travels to several islands and engages with Fisher Folk on the issues they're facing. These are our panelists this evening. Fisheries policy is really about the future. It's about ensuring that we get it right, that we're able to transform this sector, which, as you mentioned earlier, is really underperforming and uh, it faces numerous challenges. It is strategically important, but the trends are not uh, going in, in the direction we would like them to go. So. The government, the heads of government in 2003 mandated that we develop a common fisheries policy. And this is to transform the sector, to ensure 
that we continue to get sustainable social and economic benefits from these valuable resources. No, the policy is a comprehensive framework. It covers everybody. It covers all aspects of the fishing operation, from harvesting, processing, marketing, trading, management, research, data collection. It, it is comprehensive. All right, well, you spoke of politicians with clear mandates. One is uh, just across the table from you, Dennis Kelman. You've got a clear mandate from the government of Barbados to sort out uh, a, a long-standing dispute between uh, Barbados and neighboring uh, Trinidad and Tobago, stretching back about 25 years. You see, if we just focus on fish, we will always find ourselves in trouble. We have to look at the total picture and understand what is really happening. It is more dynamic than that. And I will hope to believe, I will hope, sorry, that we can have a situation now, now that we are prepared to look at the total picture, that we will have a better understanding and we will come, in, come to some common understanding as it relates to the total picture and not use, pardon my pun, the fish as a red herring. All right, well, let's, let's get this perspective uh, from Dr. Patrick McConney, who is part of a whole project on marine governance. You just heard Dennis Kelman, and you've heard from Milton Horton. Uh, Dr. McConney, uh, where do you see the validity in what Dennis Kelman in, in, in particular is saying? That while this is a discussion on fish, that ultimately there are other uh, marine resources that are out there that uh, are part of the complex political menu that he has to deal with. Thank you, Julius. Well, it's true that the ocean marine resources, living and non-living, present a very complex array. Indeed, that's what the Margov project is about. But it is also necessary at times to take certain parts and deal with what is manageable, deal with uh, what you think you can accomplish, uh, sometimes to achieve a level of success that can perhaps transform other areas. And I think uh, even going years back uh, in the particular relationship on uh, the set of fish issues, the two countries and others in the Caribbean saw the need to develop certainly at the technical level, joint commissions, areas of collaboration, data sharing, and come to a mutual understanding as to what the resources were, what could be taken, what was precautionary to leave behind and to ensure uh, was not exploited, and to work together towards common goals. And I think that is where the common fisheries policy and regime is heading and what is urgently needed in this region because we stand out among regions in the world as not really having the type of fisheries management arrangements that would be ideal for a very complex region with a whole host of countries and very small states in them. Well, first I want to say that fishes on a whole throughout the region are not well aware of what the common fisheries policy and regime is about. So the first thing we started is there's a lack of information at the fisher level. Um, fishers are really mainly concerned right now about surviving, about defending their interests. <clears throat> As we move across the region, we see fishers really concerned about management issues. Um, for instance, in Dominica, there's the whole issue of juvenile fish. And the fishes themselves are asking for management regimes, actually willing to participate in those regimes. But across the board, fishes are really primarily concerned about surviving. But we are also concerned about having a role, having a part to play in managing the resources so that we can continue to survive. Now, my question is, your network is supposed to be part of this regional fisheries uh, mechanism that uh, Milton Horton is a part of. Your, your organization, Milton, is supposed to be managing this, helping to, uh, to manage this process of a regional network. You just heard it from Mitchell Lee. They're not aware of the fisheries policy. Is it important for them to know uh, what's really in that document? 